It's a lovely Sunday, the 4th of October in the year 2020. Thank you so much for joining us for this uh, great and amazing uh, edition of the assignment program. I'm your host. My name is Andrew Mwansa. Now, despite the abundance of natural resources that Mother Zambia is blessed with, she still remains one of the poorest countries on earth. She ranks among the countries with the highest levels of inequality globally. The corruption situation is getting worse and youth unemployment still remains a huge challenge. Its debt is on the rise with no feasible solution and the biggest question still remains to who would take Zambia out of this economic doldrums. My guest this evening promises to fix things, to fix these challenges with a tag, with a tagline, Bali will fix it. My guest this evening is Aga Indichilim, president of the United Party for National Development. Mr. President, good evening and welcome to the assignment. Andrew, good evening and uh, good evening viewers. It's, it's a pleasure to be on your program. Thank it's you very much. It's an honor to have you, Mr. President. Pleasure is mine, Andrew, really. Thank yeah. you. Let, let, let's, let's begin our conversation on this particular note. Our topic for tonight is can Bali uh, really fix it? And those that are joining the conversation on the Movie TV Plus Bouquet Channel 1, the top are decoder channel 104, you'll be able to come through uh, via the number that is scrolling down your TV screen. That is plus 26 uh, Those that are joining the conversation from across the continent of Africa, yours is our social media platform. Our Facebook handle is Ask Movie TV. Get to the page and drop your comments. We'll be able to read it from that particular platform. Now, let's begin our conversation, uh, Ms. Mr. President, uh, with how you describe how your party has performed in, in, in so far as, you know, uh, offering checks and balances to the government of the day, you know, has been over the years. Well, uh, Andrew, it, it's very important that... Um we share uh, the faxes there, and, and we really don't, um, you know, fudge them as it were. I think UPND has done extremely well over the years under a very, very difficult um, uh, environment uh, with a governance system that is extremely um, unhelpful and probably close to uh, a brutal regime. Uh, but uh, UPND has done very well. If you look at 2015, um, you know, uh, election January 2015, we did very well because you can tell whether you are providing a true opposition or not, Andrew, by looking at um, the way voters receive you across the country. So the, the results are there for everybody to see. We were separated uh, between PF and UPND by 27,000 votes, uh, if you like, um, and uh, in percentage terms, really imaginary, 48%, uh, 47%. So one percentage point. In uh, 2016 elections, we were basically between UP and NPF had 98% uh, of the vote. The other seven candidates had uh, uh, just a paltry 2% uh, 2 2 vote, national vote. So it clearly shows the UPND's ascension to the top in terms of accept acceptability across the country. And you can't be accepted if you have not provided uh, what you may call um, a true opposition and therefore checks and balances. So I think that's a measure. And also, if you look at uh, uh, um, uh, Andrew, the sort of um, uh, policy options we've given over the years, especially with the economy, we did suggest how we could grow the economy. From 2011, we've been suggesting up to now. And, uh, and, uh, and the measures we put in place or we suggested does indicate that if the, those measures were put in place, the country's economy would have been in a better shape than what it is now. That's what an opposition party, a genuine opposition party does. And we've done that. For example, we predicted that if our measures were not taken into account, such as managing debt, we'll be in a debt crisis. 2013, and we projected this. And today we are in a debt crisis. So it means we were visionary. As, as an opposition party, we provided a true options, uh, economic uh, you know, you know, options. Another example is that we predicted, uh, uh, you know, that um, if nothing is done to the improved economic management, our quacha would, uh, would lose value. And we predicted in 2013, Andrew, 2013, uh, 2014, around there, we predicted that by this time, the quacha will be 20 quacha to a dollar. When the quacha was five quacha to a dollar, when PF took over office, and we knew that unless they implemented the measures we put in place, we suggested 
the quarter of collapse. Today, the quarter has collapsed. So we have indicated we're a true opposition party. What else did we indicate, And We indicated that unless certain measures were taken, the economy will collapse. Has the economy collapsed, Andrew? Indeed, it has collapsed. So we were right. What are we talking about? The economy was growing in 2011 at 7%. Now, first before the COVID uh, onset, the economy shrunk from 7% per, per, per annum growth and to 1.9% in December 2019, before COVID, <laughs> Andrew, before COVID, right? So now the economy this year is projected to, to decline to minus 4%. This is a wipeout. And as we predicted, as we provided policy options that this will be the case, it is the case. Today, yeah. there are no jobs. We predicted that there will be no jobs. We predicted that... Uh, there will be basically higher taxes and there are higher taxes. We predicted that uh, people will have no food. If it, the food is on the shelves, it will not be affordable to families. Mm. Today, but, 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 but uh, allow me to cut it short. Um, or indeed, you, you've, spoken about, in you've yes. spoken about your projections and your predictions in terms of how the economy yes. would be if, uh, peradventure, the PF hadn't taken into account some of the measures that you, you helped them you know, uh, implement. What would you say yes. you know, the relationship has been like in terms of... Uh, them accepting some of these good proposals that you're speaking about you know tonight andrew if they had taken our proposals into account the economy wouldn't have collapsed the way it is if they had taken our suggestions our policy op op options which is what a true opposition does today you would have people in employment especially the youth and the women but uh, the women and the youth are not in employment because there was no uptake on our policies. The, the party in office did not listen to alternatives, viable alternatives from people like ourselves, who, who have the understanding of the economy. Andrew, if they had taken our suggestions, the question mm -hmm. wouldn't have collapsed. If they had taken our suggestions, today you would have had uh, food yeah. prices that are affordable to mm -hmm. people. So if they had taken our options, our suggestions, on being inclusive as a people, Today, you don't have the divisions that you see in the country. Yeah. So, yeah, if if I got your show, answer... Uh, our colleagues did not take our... Suggestion. President Day Church, if I got your answer, you said the biggest challenge has been the listening challenge from the, you know, from the patriotic front. And that is the reason why they have not taken up you know, all these part proposals it, yes. that, that you've, you've spoken about. What would you say you know, is the reason why uh, they don't want to listen? Andrew, I, I think there are many reasons, um, um, but we can just discuss a few. One, they didn't have, they don't have, by their own admission, they, they, they don't have a vision. If you have a vision of development, a vision of how to create jobs, a vision of how to make food available for your people, a vision of how to support businesses, small businesses, marketeers, taxi business, bus business, right? small traders, carpenters, welders, plumbers, small suppliers into the government, into the mines, into the private sector, transporters. If a government, a party had that vision, then they will actually listen to advice and compare whether that advice fulfills their vision. In this case, by their own admission, our colleagues have confessed that they never had vision. First problem. Bible is very clear and where there's no leadership, people perish. That's why people are perishing today. I think they just don't want to listen to anybody who is offering alternatives. Because you say, why are they not listening? They just refuse to listen as the second reason. I think the third reason, really, it is that our colleagues sought public office with different intentions to look after themselves, to enrich themselves, to the exclusion of the majority Zambians yeah. who are suffering. Those are some of the reasons I can give. There are many, time allowing, we can discuss a number of them. But as the English say, Andrew, the test of the pudding is in the eating. If they had the vision, the country would have been growing because they found growth in our country. If they had vision, we wouldn't have a dead mountain the way we had. Because remember, Andrew, we warn them not to borrow money too much. We also warn them that if you borrow money, when you borrow money, you must use money not to waste it on buying planes, 
presidential jets, on buying fire tenders which are overpriced, on buying expensive ambulances. We say to them, if you choose to borrow, mm -hmm. use the money you borrow on revenue side, on yeah. investment, because it will yield a return to bring you a growth, growth, it will yield a return that will allow you to service the debt. Now, you have seen that we have a debt crisis. The government has asked for a debt relief from the euro bond providers. That is a clear sign that when they borrowed, they did not listen to us on how to use the money. Mm. They consumed the money, they wasted the money. They began to build expensive projects because of corruption, such as what? And this, to give you an example, and if they had listened to us, they would have never given a contract to build Lusaka and Dollar Highway at $1.2 billion, because that road only costs a maximum of $300 billion. $300 million. It means, Andrew, if for us in UPND, we would have saved $900 million from one project alone, and would have put that money into job creation, into agriculture, obviously job creation in agriculture, would have put money to create jobs, which the youth and the women and Zambians did, into tourism, into environmental management, which all create jobs, into mining such as manganese, and put a plant for manganese where you sell manganese not as a rock, which is only $50 per ton, but by processing it, we will sell it at $1,500 per ton. Mm. Two things there, we'll create mining jobs, Andrew. Jobs are very important at the mine site, just for manganese. Two, we'll create jobs at the processing plants for our youth, our women, and number yeah. three, but really, uh, we'll uh, earn more foreign exchange. Yeah, we'll get to the details. And that will help stabilize the quacha, and the quacha will have not lost value yeah, we'll get we'll get to the details. We'll, we'll get to the details of the Thank economy uh, later on. Uh, I'm still interested in, in 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 assessing how you know you've performed in terms of uh, offering checks and balances. There's a general feeling, and I, I do know for a fact that you've you know heard civil societies and other you know uh, individuals speak about the fact that. Um, we, we don't have an opposition in Zambia, you know. The biggest opposition hasn't been as aggressive as they ought to be. Would you agree, really, that uh, probably the reason why some of the agendas that you push for have not, have not seen the light of the day because you are probably not as aggressive as you should be, especially from you, uh, Mr. Haga Inde as the, you know, uh, the, as the leader of the largest opposition in Zambia? Well, uh, you can debate what is the meaning of aggression is noise-making interpreted and to mean aggression. You mean citizens want us to, to start street fights? Is that aggression? Maybe that's what citizens believe it is aggression. Because, Andrew, if we were not aggressive, we wouldn't have, been, we wouldn't have gone to jail 15 times. We've been jailed 15 times. It shows you that we put a government under pressure. A government which you, you call itself democratic, cannot arrest opposition leaders 15 times, in my case. Cannot arrest Mucheleka, Mubanga, Ngwira, and others in Lukasha for having committed no crime. Our members were campaigning just recently in Lukasha, just two weeks ago, and they were arrested for basically putting in a competitive environment to campaign them. A, a party that is not threatened by the opt execute arrest like that. It will not be that brutal. Look what they did yesterday, Andrew. They went into Kamanga there and destroyed a boho and the infrastructure there, which HH, myself, assisted by answering the call of the people of Kamanga who had no water. And our women there we used, to, used to wake up zero two waiting for each to have a time to draw water. We went and built a borehole there after a request was made by the families of Kamanga. And 11 years ago, Andrew, mm. and the water has been saving the people of Kamanga and Chelsea for 11 years. Yesterday, Boma and Lusambo had a rally somewhere there. They passed through that water point and destroyed the water system. Destroyed, vandalized the pumps, the, bu the buildings vandalize our office there, which is next door to the board. As an ordinary citizen, mind you, Andrew, sometimes people say HS is not doing community work. There you are. That yeah. community so, project, I put it yeah. up myself with mm -hmm. my own resources 11 years ago. 
Yeah. Will help so, so, the, so the answer members, to my question then. But everybody draws water and yeah. PF members draw water, UPND members draw water, any political party, even non-partisan members draw water. If they were not under pressure, if we were not providing effective you know, checks and balances and alternatives and we were not putting pressure, why would you go and with destroy what they destroyed yesterday? They are under pressure. It's very clear. You arrest opposition, it means you are under pressure. You destroy property like that, which is so important. Water is life. And government has failed to provide the water. We have provided the water. Maybe today, Andrew, is the day when others should know that that Kamanga water project was done by me 11 years ago as a gift to the people of Kamanga, Chelston, and the surrounding areas. If the government is, under, is not under pressure, they wouldn't go and behave the way they behave unless they agree that now the government has turned into Thagari, the government has now turned into yeah. militia. Exactly. That is the, the pressure is on. It yeah. depends on who is saying. <laughs> Andrew, why are they not allowing us to have public meetings yeah. as they are having themselves if they were not under pressure? They are definitely under pressure. Thank you. Mm. Well, but before, before I, I ask, you know, my, my other question regarding your, you know, your, your, your aggression, allow me to, to, to bring, you know, the people of Zambia up to speed with what you're just talking about, where, you know, uh, a, a water, you know, tank was, was destroyed in Kamanga, Charleston area. Now, let's have a clip quickly. We will bring the people of Zambia up to speed. Thank you, Andrew. Wabomba <laughs> Ale teteko eka la kuno echech, bata isa la ngulu kabantu. Atule tela menshi, imwe mwa isa mkuto na wila. Chila mi wamina uta tule eka la bachula. Mushefe wata mchitile, uta fifuni le. Ubu chushe wa mwatupele wa bomba, uta fifuni le. Na government, yonu na walungu venu. So chamuna kwa uta fifuni le. 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 Muradi yenu mwaika defe kula ndapari HH. Muradi yenu mwaika defe kula ndapari ya kainde na UPND. Mushe HH HH wa mchita chinshi. Imu mwa ningile fe fosa manu kubwa mfio kubwa 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 mbafe kuhino no kubwa miye mika dile ya vani. No mbale yotu wabuka. Papi kama buteko, papi kama buteko ya anga pano hii ope sopo ya wakufu manakari. Papi kama buteko ya anga pati paisa uvu buteko wa PF. Paisa wasate wa office. Hava nitu wansa wa mkombo na mpo wa nwa menshi. Deni mama kadi asponsa wa sakuwa sa mto office office finish ya chita ena bantu ofa muka chita katuareke kwa rai kula 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 Right, so now that, that is a clip that Haka uh, Inda Ichile, my president of the UPND, was uh, earlier talking about. Now, uh, there, there, was a, there was a screaming headline, uh, Mr. President. I do know for a fact that you had gone out for a fact, you know, uh, finding mission after this transpired. You, you, earlier this day, you were in uh, uh, Kamanga area, Charleston area, just get to find out what transpired. People are excited that finally he is out. There's been this general feeling, uh, Mr. President, that you've confined yourself in the house despite or besides the COVID-19, uh, wh what would you say is the other reason why you've been in the house? People are excited when they saw you today in Kamanga. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> the question is that why are people excited to see HH? If HH is not doing anything that is uh, helpful to the people of Kamanga, people of Chelsea, people of Lusaka and Zami, they're excited because they see HH as the alternative, the one that will revive the economy. They see HH as the one that will create jobs for them because the current government has failed to create jobs. They see, they're excited to see HH because they know with HH there will be basically business opportunities for them. They're excited because they know with HH everybody will be free to operate in a market at a Kamanga water point without any thugs carrying guns. What happened, Andrew, yesterday? Is shocking what I found on the ground that PF was shooting, cadres of PF were shooting live ammunition 
in the air, in the communities, unprovoked, Andrew, unprovoked, completely unprovoked, meeting people you saw in the footage. I'm sure you, you can show the footage. Uh, by the way, when you ran that clip of the people talking on their own, community members in, in Kamanga in China, you heard. But I don't know why the picture was not showing. Please, can you do something in, the, in your studio there? Mm. Because it's important people see the pictures there. Then you can show the pictures of what people were saying when I visited. They were saying, HH, come and save us. PF has made us suffer. We have no jobs. Mm. But, but, they but, know UPND, HH yeah. will give them jobs. Exactly. That's a little bit. But my, my biggest question. They were saying, my, my biggest Our question, uh, President HH, my biggest question yeah. that many people feel, uh, you know, uh, want to find out from you is that why have you confined yourself, you know, in your beautiful house? Why that? And, um, well, of course, there's COVID-19 where there's restrictions of movements. But, you know, is there any particular reason, really, to why you've decided to <laughs> confine yourself, you know, uh, in Andrew, that house? Andrew, Andrew, first, we have not confined ourselves. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been in Kamanga today, where there was a lot of shooting yesterday. We are not afraid. That's the first issue, Andrew. Secondly, if we were confined, we wouldn't have been in Lukasha. Only a few days ago, Andrew, maybe you didn't notice that we were in Lukasha. We were in Mansabombe, right? Only a few days ago. So, <laughs> it is not true that we're confined. So, that's a factual issue. The second group of things that I want to say to you, because you, you seem to be going around the confinement, is that there is no democratic space for opposition leaders. Look what they're doing to Shimbakamu. He's always in court. Every time I step out, Andrew, a country that's supposed to be democracy, when I'm exercising my freedom of movement, if I want to hold a rally tomorrow, yesterday, Today, PF had rallies in Lusaka. Tomorrow, I go to have a rally myself in China. The police will come there. The PF thugs will come with guns. You are aware of that. Now, what should I do? Do people expect me to carry guns as well, and my members to carry guns, and citizens kill each other? This is what citizens must now decide. Do they want a government for another five years after 2021 that will beat them down break their water, charge them levies, Kulima Tower, bus stops, and create a caloma, which does not work and benefits PF political party members. Is that what the people of Zambia want? HH goes to a bus stop. I can assure you, tomorrow, if I go to Kulima Tower tomorrow, just to ride the bus there, you will see there will be a fight there. Fighting HH. Why fighting the solution? HH is a solution. Why shooting people like they did yesterday. There are no freedoms in a country like Zambia. And they know that when HH comes into office, you restore the rule of law. There's a breakdown in the rule of law. Institutions have failed, and very, very clearly. And you can see the corruption also, which is driving hatred, driving violence in our communities, not just affecting HH Andrew. What happened yesterday, Andrew? Would you recommend that? I'm sure you've seen the footage where citizens were beaten very badly, beaten to death. What crime did they commit? They have freedom of assembly, they were beaten. They have freedom of expression, they were beaten. Even to operate at that water point, for citizens to draw water from that point, their rights were taken away from the PF tanks yesterday. By the way, I sympathize with the police because the police were looking over very near if the police inter interfere, the police will be beaten by the PF thugs. Have you forgotten how the PF thugs went into central police and beat police officers there? A known cadre, JJ, from Petaoki, went in there and ransacked the central police station. This has never happened in the history of our country. Yeah. And JJ is out. But Patrick Muchereka, Mubanga, Ngwira, who committed no crime in Lukasha, you know, and they're in jail. They've been charged with aggravated robbery, a non payable offense, which they never committed. Mm. Release Muchele. If, if I had to summarize, if, if I had to summarize your answer, Mr. Others. President. This is the environment, Andrew, in which we are operating. Yeah. Where 
We have created a brutal state that brutalizes political parties, including Kambiri, myself, others, genuine opposition in the Rupi. If he goes anywhere, he'll be brutalized, yeah. except surrogates of the ruling party. Mm. Now, this regime is brutalizing citizens. I want to assure the people of Zambia, they should not lose hope because as we come into 2021, there will be restoration of the rule of law. People mm. will have freedoms to move, to assemble, to associate, to do business so mm. that they can feed their own children. Because yeah. it's difficult to feed their children. So if, if I have to summarize... Some were telling me in Kamanga today. Yeah. Say, so to rule it, why to come and help us? That is mm. the environment, and thank you. Yeah, so if I had to summarize your answer, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. What you're saying is that the reason why uh, you do not want to be aggressive as you ought to be is not because you're fearing, uh, but because you want to ensure that peace, you know, uh, uh, is enjoyed among Zambians. People should not fight because HH is, 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 is in the streets of Cairo Road. People should not fight because HH is in the streets of, of, of Kaunda Square. That is the reason why... You know, if, if I got your answer correctly, is the reason why you've not, you know, entangled yourself in, in a lot of uh, uh, these engagements in terms of, uh, you know, interface with the public. You are interpreting it <laughs> different, <Andrew. laughs> I'm saying to you that I went to Kamanga today. If I was fearing the way you want to put it, I wouldn't be in Kamanga today. If I was fearing, remember, Andrew, when I got arrested in Mong, Kamba and the Someone, some lady said, if HH goes to Mongu, Komboka, that will be his grave. He'll be buried there. The police should have arrested those people. But I was not afraid. I went to Mongu. I did not do it, commit any crime. I was arrested for treason. I was kept in Mukobeko. I was tortured and for mm. 127 days. If I was afraid, and would I have gone to Mongu, even when I was warned by PF thugs, known thugs, because it's my right to go to Mongu. I exercised my right to go to that ceremony. If I was afraid and would I have gone to campaign in Sesheke where I was almost killed, if I was afraid, I, I, I'm not afraid. God gave me certain things, but not fear. He did not give us fear. If I was so it's, certain it's, it's, that it's, it's, if you it's, go it's, to Mazabombe, it's generally Russia, a perception, isn't be it? be killed there. Remember, Andrew, don't forget, just hang on a bit. Yeah. Don't forget that there was a statement issued that northern province, Wakula province, Muchinga were no go areas for HH. Have you forgotten that? Mm. Have you forgotten that? I'm sure you remember that. I remember that. If I was afraid, I wouldn't have gone to Lukasha. I wouldn't have gone to uh, Mansabongo. I went there. So it is not an issue of fear. It is not an issue of fear. Mm. If we were afraid, we would have never been in Kamanga today. We went there exactly where the guns and the bullets were. Innocent people. Yep. That's what I went to see. Mm. I'll go out more as I wish. But remember, Andrew, last time I was inspecting the water situation in Chongwe. Do you remember that incident? Just passing by the Chongwe dam there, the Weir dam there on the, on the Chongwe River, the police came to attack me. Did I return to Lusaka? No. I continued going to Rufus. The police were following me all over. So I think your expression that mm. is it because we're afraid. Yeah. Who can but, and, and I ask this because and I, I ask this as a president. Be but why committed? Yeah. So there's no fear. Mm. What is there is a is a, a brutal regime, and yeah. that's what Zambians are tired of. That's allow me to want allow me to tell you why I asked so this. Allow me to tell you why I asked this because there have been conversations uh, that have been surging around social media that. Uh, well, I think from the time that President H H, leader of the opposition, came out from Mukobeko, he's been you know he hasn't been as aggressive and. Uh, well, maybe he's, he's, he's fearing to go, go to jail again. But, but, but allow me, as we move away from this topic, the jail, that, the jail sentence that you served, did it make you strong? Did it instill fear in you that now you'll be very careful with the steps that you, that you take? You seem to love the word fear. And you seem to love the word. I, I hope you have not been given a script in this interview to say, ask him about fear. Tell those that think HH is afraid. They must think again. They have got it wrong. We are never afraid. If I was afraid, Andrew, remember, after Mukobeko, 127 days, first, I was not serving a jail sentence. Mm. I was detained illegally. I was detained illegally because I never committed a crime, as you know. I've never been convicted of a crime myself. So there's no sentence I, I, I served. I was illegally in detention, as there are many other people who are in detention today illegally, and they are waiting for HH and UPND to form government so that we can give them their freedom.
and we will give them their freedom because we must have a criminal justice system which will be reformed under UPND, which will give people a fair you know, judicial processes, that, including a prosecution. No one will be in detention when there's no investigation under UPND. Mm. That's how we reform the criminal justice system. It's God and who sent me to prison to see the rot that is going there. Not to come out and to revenge on anybody, but to clean up the system to protect citizens who are in detention for wrong reasons. So let's not talk about fear. If I was afraid, and would I have gone to Sejeka? I said it already, mm. where I was almost gunned down, and I stayed there. Yeah. I've already said that. So if anybody's given, me, given you a script that push HH about fear, <laughs> tell them that. No, no, I, I, I was, no was ensuring that. Uh, tell them that there's you, no you address fear in these HH. things that uh, people. What is there? Yeah. We need a democratic state Indeed. that will allow citizens to exercise their human rights, liberties, and freedoms. Yeah. No fear at all. And mm -hmm. People are angry out there. You will see people's anger very soon. And those that are brutalizing people will not be able to contain it. Because people have no food. UPN is giving them an alternative for food, agriculture. Yeah. UPND is giving people an alternative for food. We were told that PF will give you three things, more money in the pocket. No one has money today. That's a fact. Yeah, it's, 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 it's good my question has been responded to, and, and I'm sure... Give me a moment. Yeah. Give me a moment. He has said there will be more jobs. There are no jobs today. That's why there should be change. And Zambians must work together to deliver change. PF said there will be lower taxes. Today there are higher taxes. Even to dig a ball, you need to pay a tax. So all of the credentials of PF mm. have been basically thrown in the dustbin. That's why yeah. people are saying we want change. And how do you clip people? You clip opposition leaders. You arrest them. <laughs> and you, you, you try and confine them. You can't confine human beings. We need freedom so that people can think freely. We can create jobs. We can restore the economic damage that has been created so that we can make food available and affordable to the people of Zambia by growing the economy through diversification, Andrew, through growing agriculture, through growing tourism, through agro-processing, so that we can create more value and more jobs along the way. As I told you, through mining, add value addition through, as I gave you an example, manganese, which when you mine is $50 per ton, mm. when you process is $1,500 per ton. That's why you saw people excited in Kamanga today to see a change. That is the fear PF has. So to say that you are afraid, far from it, my friend. Tell those that think HH is afraid that they have not seen what is coming. They will be very surprised because Zambians are very unhappy about what PF is doing to them. Mm. You know, very, so talking very about unhappy. Zambians and being... I, and I agree yeah. with the people of Zambia. Thank you. Yeah, but, but speaking about Zambians being unhappy, um, well, I don't know what you are using to measure that. Uh, you, you've suffered a number of setbacks, really, uh, President HH, in terms of... Uh, you know, uh, what councillors resigning from your party joining the PF. But on top of that, you know, uh, the PF has been scooping a number of by-elections this particular year. Just recently, you suffered another huge setback. You lost in Lukasha in Mwansawombo. Don't you think the, the, the spirits of those thousands have been dwindled? And probably they think we'd, we, we, there's no future for the UPND. Well, and. Um you can use words as you wish. That's part of the freedoms <laughs> that you can do for the people of Zambi. Uh, and you should be free to use the word opinion to yours because we understand politics. We know what happens in by-elections when uh, GMMU is there lining milli -mil, uh lining food and cash uh, as people go to reporting queues and people are hungry. But also people know that in the general election, that's when you can deliver change. We understand that. We know what was happening to MMD in 2010, in 2011. They were winning by-elections. Come 2011, there was a change of government. We know that. Uh, you may be young, Andrew. Eh? History mm. teaches you a lot. In 1988, Andrew, right? I don't know if you were born in 1988, right? <laughs> you need one in an election with over 90%. You need government, one party state. Uh, won an election in 1988 by over 90%, so it was said. Yeah. But by 1989, a year later, there were food riots. By 1990, people demanded change. By 1991, the very people that are said to have voted for the UNIP government, 90%, 2% of 
two years earlier, asked for an early election, two years ahead of an election, and they were wiped out by 70%. Zambians are not foolish. They understand what's going on. They know the approach in violation. They know the manipulation. They know. Didn't you hear what President Mumba say, said about Lukasha election? Is it not the reason you summoned that the police? There is another example. Why do you summon someone to a police station? And the Electoral Commission had the audacity to demand that President Mumba, Nevers Mumba, must go to the ECZ to answer charges without fail. When did the Electoral Commission become a police department? When did the Electoral Commission become a court? They've never been. So you can see the collapse of the institutions. Because part of the subject today, I understood, was supposed to be governance. Yes, it was. It means we've lost the governance. If the Electoral Commission can command an opposition leader to answer to them without fail, they are sucking powers they don't have. And I'm very grateful that President Mumba never went there. I would have never gone there myself. Because they work for us. They work for the people of Zambia. The people of Zambia don't work for the Electoral Commission. But you can see the behavior, and it tells you the rot that is going on in the country. But we want Zambians to know that they must not lose hope because we are going to redeem the country. So your perception, Andrew, yeah. is one angle. But there's several other angles to look at must be despondent. They must even work harder because HH is only alone. If HH is in jail, they must... They are yeah. for don't, don't you think the PF, for for jobs, ideally, don't you think, President Etchik, don't you think the PF ideally should be the easiest political party to win uh, you know, to, to, to be kicked out of office because of the number of challenges uh, that I think you've raised, your political party has raised, issues of the fact that it is, you know, it is unprecedented in the history of this country that the highest note can't buy a bag of mill mill. The corruption situation is getting worse, as, as we are told by TIZ, Transparency International Zambia. There's a lot of issues that have gone wrong, yet the PF seem to be enjoying the popularity. And, 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 and you know, the challenges themselves should... Uh, uh, should campaign for you as the opposition. Uh, but, but alas, you know, the, 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 the PF are still, you know, uh, enjoying the popularity. D doesn't this go back to the earlier question I asked President H.H. that probably we don't have a strong opposition that can kick out the PF? Andrew, Andrew, maybe you are, you are still young. Are you happy today? Are you satisfied with the salary you get wherever you work? At your workplace there are you able if you are not married is your family able to live a better life today the answer to those questions is no do you have the freedom to criticize the pf without risk of being bitter can you wear a party regarding whether it's NAREP or upnd all indeed ndc or add or people's party as it were without being beaten why should you be beaten for wearing a political party regarding why is that the way it was before 2011 no if it was like that pf would have had difficulties to survive but we are proud of you supporters of UPND should be proud very hostile environment so the point i'm making is that you will see the reaction of Zambians in the 2021 elections. But we need a free and fair election. We need national registration cards to be given to all citizens of Zambia in an equitable manner, not what is happening now. In the five provinces of Western, Southern, Central, Lusaka, Copper Belt, the national registration card issuers under the Ministry of Home Affairs the National Registration Office, is a chaotic situation. Why do you think it's chaotic? It's the PF trying to rig the elections. Voter registration. They want to do away with the, the current voter register. And yet it's illegal. If they are not afraid of UPND and the opposition, why are they doing all of these issues? It's because they are afraid of UPND. They know that in a general election, they cannot use GMMU, which again, by the way, GMMU is doing that, you know, distribution of food illegal. It's against the electoral law. They know that. So you can't have a free and fair election in that environment. Now, number three, if the PF, in your view, were feeling strong and com confident, why are they pushing Bill 10? 
which is meant to take away the powers of citizens over certain things, which will confer somebody a third term. Third yeah. term is not wanted in this country. The law does not allow a third term. But PF are pushing Bill 10 in order to allow somebody to be a third term. Mm. And when we talk about it, people get angry. They start shouting and threatening death on, onto us. Remember, God is the owner of life. He's the giver of life. Only he can take it away. No one should be threatening other citizens with termination of life. Somebody in Dola said, mm. Where do you get the powers to even threaten that if you wanted to kill HH? HH would have died a long time ago. Who is you wanted? Where did you get the power to eliminate lives? Where did you get it from? If you start shooting like yesterday, what they were doing in command, who are you to kill people? God's people, that's, that life belongs to God. All these things, my friend, Zambians are watching their way, and they will speak in 2021. What we want is a free, fair, credible election. Yeah. That's why the current voter register must not be removed, must not be taken away. New voters must add it to each, and then it's a build-up process, the incremental process. There is fear to remove the current voter register and replace a new register which will be biased towards the perceived supporters of PF. If they were not afraid of us, if we were not strong, we were not aggressive, and if we were afraid the way you are saying, they wouldn't be maneuvering on NRC biases, voter registration, and trying to do away with the voter register and build ten. They would have never done that. Andrew, what you are saying is the opposite, it's the contrary. The PF are so scared of UPND and other opposition parties. And by the way, Going in 2021, it's not just the UPND they are contending with, they have to contend with. It is the people of Zambia, and that is the PF, and their corruption, and their surrogate parties. Mm. The winner is always the people. That's how it happened in the 60s to deliver independence. That's how it happened in 1991, it was one party state against the people, the people won. That is how it happened in 2001. You may have been young Andrew, when somebody wanted the third term. The people of Zambia banded together, of course with political parties, and defeated the third term. This time in 2021, the people of Zambia will band together, the good will band together, and on the right side of history, against the PF and their corruption, and their surrogates, yeah. and their dying economy. Yeah. Would, would you say, Mr. President, that uh, there is, uh, you know, there's a wind of change ahead of the, in the next year's elections? Would you, would you confidently say that? Mm -hmm. Andrew? I've already asked you a question. <laughs> Are you happy with what is going on in the country? Do people have money? No. Do people have jobs? No. Can families afford food? No. Look at the dollar quash exchange rate. Can you, a small business working in a, a commercial market who used to import blankets mm. in, from Tanzania or elsewhere, just a while ago, the same amount of money, maybe about 60 blankets. They've lost 40 blankets because the PF has damaged the quacha against the dollar. The, that trader is not happy. A farmer, is he happy? No. Is a worker whose tax relief for 2021 budget, Andrew, in terms of tax-free income, which has been increased from 3,300 quacha to, to 4,000 quacha. 4, 700 yeah. quacha difference, Andrew. A year ago, 700 quarter difference was worth 50 50 dollars today it is worth only 30 dollars 35 dollars mm. is that worker happy no Given uh, uh, that uh, and precisely not valid, yeah they suffer mm. another the price of goods and services milli meal sugar salt carpenter have gone up how can a worker be happy they are not happy our civil servants happy they're not happy because they are being removed and retired in national interest mm. for committing no crime and for us Every civil servant who has been retired in national interest, consider yourself on leave. When we come back, we'll bring you back into your offices and probably give you job stability. Not probably, give you job stability. If you're a policeman, a senior man, you will never be removed from your job under UPND as long as you perform your duties. You have a job security. You're a permanent secretary, you're a director, yeah. you will be promoted on merit, not on track, not on partisanship, but as long as you're examined. Those in the civil service are not happy. And 
those in the police are not happy. The army are not happy. If you go under PF now to serve in the UN peace mission, the PF government deducts 50% of your allowance. Why? When UPND comes, we will not deduct any allowance. Our soldiers, men and women in uniform, and other staff who go to serve in the UN mission, they will be given their allowances 100%. Even they are not happy. They understand nobody is happy. Salaries are paid late. Council workers, some of the councils and are seven months behind in pay. You think those people are happy? They are not happy as all. Civil servants, Andrew, you are married, you are a civil servant in Osaka, you are a doctor, you are a teacher, you are married to a nurse who is also in a, a civil servant, you are transferred to Chipata, leaving your wife here, breaking families, breaking, you know, households. In under the UPND government, you will not be transferred like that. We will understand that you are supposed to stay together in the same town to run your family. A teacher mm. who has trained Andrew, if the teacher had a diploma, then they go and get a degree. Yes, yes but, but, but President HH, are you UPND seeing a wind of change? Well, what what, you're, what, you're, what you're telling the people of Zambia are yes, challenges I'm, which they're passing through. My question pre 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 precisely was, uh, do you see a wind of change ahead of next year's elections? I know for a fact that you've, 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 you've that highlighted challenges. In the sense that people are suffering than ever before. People are suffering even worse than the colonial times. Worse than the one-party one state. So that's why there will be change. Because you can't just say wind of change. What mm. is wind? Wind is the suffering that people are going through. Will I be wrong if I say you are banking on the challenges that the people of Zambia are going through now as uh, the currency that will take you into office next year? No, no, no. no. And first, we set the stage that people are suffering. Because you choose a government to give you a better life. If a government doesn't give you a better life, doesn't give you a job, why should you keep that government? If a government doesn't give you, if you like, a, a business opportunity, opportunities are going to foreigners, why should you keep that government? That's why you elect a government every five years. So there is an opportunity to elect a government. Now, there is failure on one side, and hence the need for change. On the other side, there is a UPND which offers the alternative, a very clear alternative, and that's why people drift to UPND because it will offer them jobs which they don't have now. It will stabilize the quarter. I can assure you, and when we take office, we are sworn in 2021 August at 10 hours. By 14 hours, the quarter will appreciate based on what we call in business, in economics, in finance, market sentiments. The, 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 the vision of the UPND, the quality of leadership of the UPND, the ability to turn around the economy, that alone will send a message into the market that now you have a decent and visionary leadership coming <laughs> and the, the quarter will begin to appreciate. That's a fact. Mm. That's the UPND now. What else are people expecting? They know that when UPND comes into office, the economy will be re resuscitated. Re resuscitated. And they know that. There is a turnaround in the economy coming. There will be economic diversification coming. There will be strengthening of institutions coming under the UPND. There will be a strengthening of democracy coming. There will be national units coming. There will be quality education, even for orphans and for the poor. There will be quality health care to save lives. They will know that. UPND can do that. We will do that. They know that there will be a restoration of the rule of law. They will know that their rights will be respected. They will know that, Andrew, you work for movie television. Movie was closed for some time. Threatened for closure. Combined radio is closed. The stage radio is closed. Prime television will be closed. UPND is saying no media house will be closed <laughs> under, under UPND. You operate freely. They know that there is suffering under PF. The economy has collapsed. There are no jobs. There's no money. There's violence in the markets. Salaries are late. They know that UPND will fix all these problems. And that's why it is not banking on the problems only. It's also what we are offering which yeah. is what I'm describing to you. Mm. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll come to, 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 to how Bali will fix many of these as things. As long as we have the free, fair yeah. elections. And, and yeah, and, 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 and of course, later on, we'll come to how Bali uh, you know, will fix these many challenges that and, and, you've uh, highlighted. But let's come to um, you know, uh, the, the, the budget which was presented uh, you know, uh, last week by, 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 the, by the finance minister, Dr. Waliang Andu. What is your general overview of the 2021 budget? Andrew, Andrew. 
that budget is a disaster. As you know, by an economic and financial teller. As you know by now that we are economic and financial philosophers. A philosopher will tell you what is coming. And we have said, we said that the economy collapsed, just collapsed. We said there'll be no jobs, there are no jobs. I mean. We said that the quarter will lose value, go to 20 quarters. When it's reached 20 quarter, Andrew, I think you saw in the media, some people brought the statement that I issued years back, that HH is right again. We talked about the debt mountain. If you borrow this way, you don't invest in revenue generating, you will fail to pay your debt. Today, the government is asking for relief from the bond orders. They basically failed to meet their obligation because we told them, don't run the economy this way. They didn't listen. What is the budget under? A budget is an instrument. Let me <laughs> give you a simple description of a budget. And allow me to give you a simple description, Please uh, non-technical non description of a budget. Please do so. A budget is an instrument for generating revenue and directing expenditure. You got that one, Andrew? I did. A budget is an instrument for generating revenue and directing expenditure. You look at the 2021 budget. The first thing that you notice that in 2020, the budget was $7 billion plus. But the 2021 budget has shrunk to less than $7 billion, to around $6 billion. So we have already lost a billion dollars. It's gone. That is not what you call a good budget. Andy. That's a very bad budget. It means Zambians must tighten their belt for more suffering. We, the people are already suffering. They told you in Kamanga, they're telling you they're going to have another $1 billion wiped out of their expenditure because the revenue is not there. Remember, an instrument for directing, for generating revenue mm. and directing expenditure. So already a billion dollars that is not there, more travel. No medicines in hospitals, and that's a many. No sufficient education for our children, especially orphans and those from poorer families. No enough clean water for our people. No enough jobs for our people. Because when you have an economy, a budget that wipes out, mind you, a budget, as I described it, is an economic instrument which you assess the performance, you determine the performance of the economy at least for 12 months, mm. in our case, January to December. Follow me, eh? Yeah. And yeah, follow, me. follow me. I know you are used to politicians in, the, in, this, in one party that really cannot comprehend these issues. And that's why the country is in distress, because where, where there's no leadership, the people perish. The Bible says so. And that's mm. why people are perishing. And that's why they need change. And change the where? To UPND and, uh, and other positive forces. Uh, you know. So now, Andrew, so that's the first problem. The second problem in the budget you have yeah. is that uh, you have a budget, Andrew, that is reducing allocation to essential sectors of the economy. The economy which is going to decline by 4% this year, it will be worse next year. Why am I saying so? Because under the allocation of the expenditure side of the budget, mm. very little money has been allocated to the economy. To the economy, the economy where agriculture, industry, manufacturing, tourism, even in mining. Remember, I gave you an example earlier yeah. that for us, we would not be selling manganese as the rock. We will be selling it as a processed product, and it will give us. $1,500 per ton, as opposed to $50 per ton. So it means we are going to earn $1,450 per ton more than what PF is doing. That's why people want to vote for UPND. Because you ask me, is it just because of the difficulties? No, it's because we are offering <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> better alternatives, right? So now, you have a situation where you are going to have lesser money available to invest in the economy. Andrew. How can this budget 
direct growth in the economy. Mm. It can't. So this is a wrong budget. This is not even a, it's something we call a budget. This is a disaster. And that's what we've been saying all along, and the PF doesn't listen. So that's the second problem. Why, you should ask me a question, and let's have a nice conversation so people can follow. Why is there no money allocated to the economy? It's because, one, the money, Andrew, is being lost to, on two items only. What are these two items? On debt service. Mm. In Congole. To pay for Kalova and Maiche Wande. Mfana Wande, okay? Chinaba uza, to osa Kongola ndala ama, osa Kongola Kalova, osa Unonga ndala ama. Now, we are suffering the pain. But we are not the ones who borrowed. It's not this 18 million Zambians who borrowed. It's just a small clique of people in here. That's why there must be change. They must go and rest. So it's because 40% of the revenue, all the revenue, remember I told you the budget is an instrument for generating revenue on this side, yeah. on another for direct expenditure. Mm. Because the revenue generated, 40% of it is going to go to debt service. Kulipira and Kongole, Zamenchi Nava was at Osa Kongola Dara. Muga Kongola Darama, Osa Jandala, Osa Eka Mafia tenders. Nangabana Vera, Swanabe, Abula Mafia tender, be my will, but about that two hundred thousand dollars each, Bazi Kapamutengo, one million dollars. Kubandalam, and Kubandalam, Zaba and Dani, Zaiwe, Zaba Navan Shiwa, Zan Kote, Zaba Zan Bakaz Bam Zabi, and everybody. This is what this budget is all about. This is what PF has done. Because, you know, we can't hide Andrew from the truth, right? So where is also the money gone? It's going to emoluments, which leaves you less than 15% of all the money in the budget and to go to the economy. 85% of the money has gone to consumption. You can't grow an economy like that. And that's what we've been advising since 2011. And earlier, remember, Andrew, people are saying, no, HH is bitter. Who is bitter now? We are not bitter. Yeah. Well, we well, love this well, one of the revelations we in are, the budget. Uh, Andrew, Andrew yeah. just one more point. Yeah. Why is this budget also wrong? This budget is proposing to borrow over thirty percent of the revenue to finance this budget. Yeah. Twenty twenty one. Can I ask you a question, Andrew, so that mm -hmm. the listeners can follow our conversation? Where would the PF get man borrow money from? You want to tell me? You want to answer my question, Andrew? For the sake of listeners, where will people pay borrow money from? Let me answer the question for you. Yeah. They can't borrow money from anywhere because they are failing to pay the Kalova, the Congole they borrowed. No one will lend PF in the finance world, economic world, we say, we call it, there's no headroom for PF to borrow money from anywhere because they are already defaulting on the loans that they have. Mm. So when you default and the credit agencies rate you downwards, Fitchy, Standard and Poor's, rate you to see, it means your economy is junk economy. Why is your economy junk? Because of poor leadership. Poor leadership of, of the PF. Why shouldn't people change? Mm. That is why they should change the government. So they have no capacity to borrow because no one will give them money to waste on buying presidential jets, on buying ambulances, on buying fire tenders which are corruptly procured, on building expensive roads. That is why we are saying under UPND, we are going to lower the cost of projects. Yeah. We will mm. only build the road at the right cost. Yeah. That's why I, 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 I love the us. fact that we you brought out the issue of date. Now, one of the I love the fact that you've brought out the issue of date. Now, one of the one of the revelations that uh, Dr. Waliangandu uh, gave us in the 2021 budget is that we have uh, debt that amounts to uh, you know over 18.5 billion dollars. Uh, As a country, how do we begin to dismantle? you know, uh, this particular, you know, date. I, I, I know for a fact that you move by the tagline that Bali will pay, uh, and maybe also we can take this opportunity to, you know, to, re to really uh, answer the question of how will Bali pay uh, the Nkongole that the Zambian government has gotten over the years? Bali will fix it. Believe me, Andrew, even you inside you, you know that UPND and Bali will fix this economy. You know it. You may not want to show it because you may be fired from movie television. <laughs> For obvious reasons, victimization. But inside you, you know that there's failure under PF, there's opportunity under UPND, there will be an economic revival, 
the economy will turn around. That's what we say Bali will fix it. Bali and the team helping this country together with the UPND and Bali's team. So we'll fix that. You know in your hearts, and any youth knows in their heart of hearts that continuing with PF beyond 2021 is like committing suicide. That's why people must get the NRCs and voters cards and turn out to vote in big numbers for Bali. Too. So for Bali to fix it, they have to vote for Bali and the UPA. So now, debt. Now Bali pay debt. Your question, mm. you, yes, your question about Nkongole and what my dear colleague, fellow citizen, Waliangan, Dr. Waliangan, who I know very well, he is now told you the story which was being hidden by PF. A year ago, before he became finance minister, the, the finance ministers who were there were cheating the people of Zambia that the debt was only $11.5 million. Have you forgotten that, Andrew? These are not my figures, right? Mm. These are PF figures. All of a sudden, Waria now is telling us the truth that it is 18 point something billion dollars, close to 19 billion billion dollars. Let me tell you that there's still debt which is not disclosed. There's pipeline debt, what we call in our, in our field, pipeline debt. There's debt which is not yet, you know, recorded. When you add all of this, let me say today, mark my words, Andrew, the true debt position that Zambia has is more than $20 billion. It's not $18 billion. Remember, I'm an economic philosopher, and I've been proven to be right. I'm right on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me. I'm right on this one. Now, it means Bwariang Andrew has finally done what the other finance ministers could not do to tell the people of Zambia the truth that we're in a crisis. The economy is collapsed. So it's no longer Hakainde talking. It's no longer a person who was criticized talking. It's now the horse. Who is the horse? The Minister of Finance. And admits that now the country is in economic crisis. So that's another point in the budget that is, reflects on the failure of the PF. So what are we going to do ourselves? Part of our agenda, Andrew, part of our agenda is to restructure this debt. In order to grow the economy, we can't grow it in the manner it is. One of the fundamental roles that we play, Bali will fix it and the team, is to restructure the debt and to bring about a prudent economic management in the country, to bring discipline. How are we going to do it? We will do a couple of things. One, debt restructuring. Andrew, mark my points. Mm. Two, debt rescheduling. Three, we will put a moratorium on any borrowing. A moratorium, in simpler language, Andrew, means we put a stop to further debt, which means we will not do what the 2021 COPEP is going to do. Because they're proposing to borrow 35, 40% of the revenue. No one will lend you money. So we will live within our means, which means, Andrew, we will not be going out to borrow money when we cannot fail. We are already in default when we cannot pay for the money that we've borrowed already. Because it was eaten. Consumption in economic terms and finance means the money was eaten in fire tenders. We, where you say, when you say, where is the money? If the money was invested in, in the economy and mm. in revenue generation, you would have seen the economy growing to 7, 8, 10%. But the economy is minus 4. It means the money was eaten by buying, for example, Chiwiru Barachicha. Chiwiru mm. Barachicha in a fire tender. Where is the money also sitting? It's sitting in the presidential jet. And is it not really a crime is it not a disgrace for anyone who is running a country called zambia today to buy a presidential jet at 130 million dollars Andrew, and then you sign a maintenance contract which they've not told the people of zambia the pf i want them to argue after this program yeah. they have signed a maintenance contract to maintain that presidential jet Andrew, for 200 million dollars so you add 130 million dollars to $200 million, that's $330 million. And that money we would have used to send over 30, 40, 50,000 students, Wana Wanshiwa, Anamasie, children from poorer families, to university 
and from, from an economic from an economic yeah, view. That money yeah. we would have created youth funds. Mm. That money Andrew would have put in tourism. That money would have put in Andrew agro processing to produce more million meal to send to Congo to sell to Angola yeah. and to sell to Congo and any more foreign exchange and to feed Zambia and also to bring in fertilizer Andrew mm. at a lower cost than what PF is doing. Let me give you an example. Today, PF is importing fertilizer at, the, if you like, 21,000 kwacha per ton. When the true cost is what UPN will do, will bring down that cost of fertilizer to $7,000 per ton. Let's work out the difference. It means we will have saved and essentially 14,000 kwacha per ton. From 21,000 kwacha per ton, because of corruption under PF, Mm. which we are getting fertilizer now, when UPND comes, we promise, mark this conversation, we will reduce the price of fertilizer to 7,000 kwacha per ton. The difference, and the difference is 14,000 kwacha. So we will save the farmer 14,000 kwacha. We will save the treasury 14,000 kwacha. What is the meaning of this, and It means we don't have to borrow more money. Remember the measure I told you? That mm. we'll manage the debt, restructure the debt, so that we borrow less money because yeah. from the money we have, we can create savings when we know how to do it as UPND, which PF doesn't want to do it because they want to enrich themselves. And we'll be able to reduce the pressure to borrow money by restructuring and using our money, which is already with us. And also we are going to sell the jet and by selling that jet, we'll do away with a maintenance contract of $200 million. We will save $200 million in, in maintenance. And if we earn another 130 million dollars from the, the, the jet we will save at least 200 300 330 million dollars that mm. money andrew we will put it in the economy in tourism we'll put it in uh, job creation yeah. I, have, we'll I have three questions to ask you before I, I have three questions to ask before you know my, my time runs out um, have you understood what uh, how we are going to deal with the debt? Have yes, I understand? understand. I understand. Totally understand from what you've explained. But, you know, speak st still Thank on the issue of debt. Uh, there's Nchimunya watching us in Wengua. There's Chisha watching us in the Copper Belt. And, and they, uh, they want to understand, you know, from, from, from the economic perspective, what is the implication of debt? How does debt affect, you know, uh, you know, average people? They understand that, you know, the, the, the debt in Zambia has highly increased. How does this affect them? When you borrow money, Andrew, instead of using your own resources, let's take a household, an mm. example of a house. Yeah. Are you married, Andrew? Not Are yet. You married? Not yet, Mr. President. Right. You live with your parents or you live alone? I live alone. <laughs> ah, right. Let's take a family, Andrew. If the father goes to borrow money, he borrows... 200,000 kwacha Andrew, he gets a loan, that's the debt we're talking about, mm. 200,000 kwacha from the bank, then he buys a second-hand BMW or a Mercedes-Benz. You understand? Yeah. And every month, if he earns 20,000 kwacha, every month, the bank where he borrowed the money will deduct Let's say 5,000 5, kwacha from the loan. Let's say he earns 10,000 kwacha. Then he pays a loan towards a car hmm. called a second-hand BMW. BMW is a, let's use a Mercedes-Benz, second-hand. It means out of his 10,000 kwacha salary, he has paid tax maybe 3,000 kwacha, thereabouts. He's left with 7,000 kwacha. Then out of 7,000 kwacha, 5,000 kwacha Andrew goes to pay a loan for his pay from that loan. He's only left with it 2,000 kwacha. 2,000 kwacha then, it means he can't buy enough food for his family. He cannot send his children to school. He cannot basically take care of the family. Have you understood? I'm understanding. Now, that is the... Let's take it to the national level. When the country borrows Kalova, which we told them not to borrow, it means now the budget of 2021, Andrew, mm. exactly the point I was making,
the money that we earn on the revenue side, yeah. remember what I told you about, about, about the budget? We lose 40% of that to pay interest for the loans like euro bonds. It means that 40% of the money is gone. It's not available to be invested in agriculture so that we can produce more food at a lower cost. What do you have? You have an increase in the price of milk. Yeah. That is how it's affecting everybody. When government of PA borrows that mm -hmm. money, it means you are not able to grow maize at a lower cost because you are also borrowing to buy fertilizer at a higher cost higher because cost. Yeah. you want to service the loan so that money is not available. Mm -hmm. Then the price of millimil goes up because you have less maize, less millimil. The rule of the business is that if the product is in short supply, millimil is cheaper, then mutengo is in the so instead of buying new at 100 kwacha, yeah. that's why you are buying bunga mukula bunga at 150 kwacha. Mm. Well, what is the that status? Is how it affects, yeah, that's how it affects the person mm. in Mutendere, in Chiplukusu. Yeah. That's how it's affecting a person everywhere. Yeah, the lastly, next yeah, lastly that, really, before, before yeah. I'm, I'm cut, you know, uh, what is the status of uh, the opposition alliance as we build to 2021? But Andrew, have you understood how the debt affects you and me? Totally. And other people, right? I've only given you one example. The other example is that instead of that money which we have paid to service the debt, instead of it being used to create jobs, to support tourism, you will have now lesser jobs. That is why you see a job advert. One job, there will be 20,000 applicants. That's a message to you that the jobs are fewer now and only one person will get a job. 19,999 people will not get a job. It is the consequence, is the result of having borrowed money, which then money was used to pay a debt instead mm -hmm. of investing it in the agro-processing to create, to produce more minimum into the manganese processing machine to produce manganese, which is processed and sell it at a higher price. That is how you see it, job, no jobs in the streets, high cost of living, food, high cost of carpenter, that is because of your Congole. You see it in that if you have any business you are doing, Andrew, now you cannot make more money because most of the money now has gone to pay Karoba, to pay Congole. Everybody yeah. because of poor decisions of the few number of people in PF, that's mm. how it's affecting all of us. And that's yeah. why we must all work together to deliver change so that we can have jobs, yeah. We deliver change so that we can have cheaper food to deliver change so that we can have business opportunities and be able to look after our families and also so that our children can go to school. And when you go to hospital, that's another example. You have no COVID protective gear for our health staff. You have no proper you know, medicine panadols in there. You have your salaries delayed as a local government worker. It is because of this debt that the PF has borrowed. Why would you vote for them in 2021? I am asking that question. And unless you are happy, I know you are not happy. Let's deliver change so that yeah. we can have a but, but I, I know my credits so, are running. What was your next question? Yeah, I, I know my, 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 my credits are running now and will be done in, in, in a few seconds. But what is the status of the opposition ahead of the elections next year? Are you, are, are you working on modalities to field in one candidate? Are you looking for more opposition parties to join the, the alliance? I think the main challenge we have, Andrew, is to accept that PF has failed and we need change. That's one side. It's a given. No one is arguing anymore unless there's something wrong with that individual. Unless you are one of the small number of people who are feeding off from the PF. Everyone else is suffering. Therefore, it creates this situation of the people on one side, where UPNDK is and other genuine opposition must work together. So the alliance we are looking for, which is necessary in 2021, towards 2021, Andrew, is the alliance of the people, which includes UPND, which includes the genuine church mother bodies and church members, which includes genuine NGOs, not surrogates, mm. not Christians for somebody, yeah. which includes other political parties, Andrew. That is the way the 2021 must be viewed. It is the people of Zambia and the 
who are on the right side of history as it was the people of Zambia against the British colonial system yeah. in 1963, 1964. As it was the people of Zambia against the one party state in 1991, mm. as it was in 2001 to defeat the third term, so it shall be in 2021. So it's an alliance of the people and the European League and other independent and genuine opposition parties, not surrogates of PF. Yeah. You know, we had a program not long ago on them. You mm. saw one opposition party, which was a clear surrogate of PF. You know it. I mean, you saw how Sean Demo behaved on that program. I'm not talking about such opposition. I'm talking about genuine opposition parties that should work with the people of Zambia yeah. and do away with the Kaloban Kongori, do away with the, with the joblessness, do mm. away with the problems in hospitals of no medicine, yeah. do away with the bias in the do away with the issues that surround the electoral process and be able to change for the better. This is the alliance yeah. that President we're about and allow this me is to the history of our country. Thank you. Yeah. Allow me to say thank you so much for number one honoring an invitation to speak to the millions of the Zambian people that are watching now.